Okay, this week we're going to be painting at Prospect Park. Uh, Lee's up there looking at the board, seeing what kind of information we can get about the park. I know it's been here quite a while, but I don't know the exact date. So, let's see, we get some more information on the back of this sign. What does it say as far as when it was built? Well, it was originally uh, purchased in 1889, and I guess the park opened in uh, around 1900. Okay, so... Recently had its 100th anniversary. We just uh, walked up from the information sign. That must have been a skating uh, shack there when they allowed skating on the pond, and I see up on the top there's a little gazebo, I think they call it a chapel now, and then there's a pavilion in the background, and so that, I think they must have redone a lot of these buildings. Incredible branching pattern on that place. Boy, that is just a massive structure. Yeah, this might be a good painting with that tree in the foreground and the pavilion and the pond. Oh, well, looks like the fishing crew is here. I didn't realize, but they do stock the pond here, and, and I think trout is one of the fish that they have. Stocking or not, usually, uh, you know, trout have to have cold water. Yeah. But the other fish, uh, you know, we have a pond out where I live, and uh, they have two programs through the state where you can order either spring or fall. Catfish. Well, didn't he say he caught one this morning? Yeah, he said yeah. he caught a trout this morning. Needed one more for dinner. Well, apparently, every time they had wild animals wander into the area, they would keep them in that little shed back there. And one time they had a wolf, which we don't really have many of those in our area anymore. <laughs> I heard of two up in the Dixon area a while ago. Oh, really? Yeah, I posted it on my website. It didn't make the main news, but I thought it was exciting. Oh, Wolves yeah. In our area, you know? Yeah. Right there is the uh, meeting house, the Chautauqua house, for programs and speeches. Across the way, that was the restaurant. Now the picnic pavilion. That, we, we saw the bear shed, but we're not sure if they ever actually kept bears or donkeys in it. But they did have donkey rides here. They also had a concession where you could rent a boat or canoe and go around the lagoon. Mm -hmm. And until about 1935, 36, the lagoon was used for swimming. That was the official Moline swimming place. And in that year, they closed it down because of uh, fecal bacteria in the water. At the time, they blamed it on um, uh, what you might call septic tanks. Oh, it wasn't, wasn't from the bears up there. No, it wasn't from the bears. <laughs> but, but, but when they started getting television cameras down sewers in the 90s, they discovered several of these houses had hooked their sewer lines onto the storm sewer. Oh, okay, which comes good. right into the pond. But until about 1935, this was swimming. In the summertime, maybe a little fishing in the fall, and then ice skating all year, all through the winter. And that by itself was quite a, quite a, how should I say, a harrowing experience. You'd be out here, it'd be 20 below, and you'd be having a big fire hose, and you'd be top dressing the ice yeah, to smooth it off. They use uh, machines for that now, but in the old days, we scraped it with hand scrapers. We would snow plow it with hands plowed, and we'd walk along with big hoses. If it was near freezing, I mean, if it was 20 below, we'd probably have the water coming straight out of the hose. Why waste time? If it was near freezing or a little above freezing, the hose would be set on fine spray. And it was quite an art. This whole thing changed. We are at Lee, Lee's easel. See what he's doing here. Let's get up a little closer.